Let's see if we can do anything else. We still haven't investigated the crime scene because my character keeps throwing up every time. How do we fix that problem? <laughs> how do I how do I make him stop throwing up? Um Let's see here. Uh the smoker on the balcony, so we know first visit after twenty one. It's only twelve fifty eight. We got a lot of time. Cleaning lady said the apartment. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We gotta go talk to her. That's right. So we had investigated uh, an apartment and we found that there was someone trying to sell the apartment in the apartment. Although she was shady as fuck. Let's go record, report to this very sweet old old lady right here. Hello, Missy. Let me, let me tell you about what I found here. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh... I didn't find any countercultural people in apartment 10. It's just a real estate agent. Uh, she says, I see. She takes out her handkerchief and wipes her nose. I hope some good people are finally going to move in. This place needs them. <laughs> yes, radio computer wizards are coming. No one is coming. There will be nothing but squalor unless it's... No, we're going to say... <laughs> Lax women and sexual deviants. That's who will come. <laughs> we're going to say this right here. Oh, I do like wizards. And people like that in general. They have a lot to tell us about our fates. All right, I'm off. See you later, lady. All right, so we know we know what's... Oh, wait, what's this? This isn't just a five-pointed star. It's an inverted white pentagram cradled in a wreath of antlers. The iconography, the iconography of communism, in other words. Look out, Kim. There are communists here. Let's, let's inspect it a little closer. The Star and Antlers was developed in the sixth decade of the last century and quickly adopted by Mazav and the Kamrun communards during the revolution. Why is the star upside down? To symbolize the topping of the old order. Uh, what's the deal with the antlers? The wreath of antlers represents a natural crown. It was about building a society that could exist in accord with the natural world and at the same time above it. Why white? My God, I'm an annoying I'm an annoying human asking these questions, because white is the color of peace. What does it invoke in me? Evoke nothing at all yet. Right now, it's just meaningless shapes on the wall. All right, cool. The more you know. Um. So uh, we can't smell anything. We need to be able to not smell, and I need to look at this body. This body is not getting investigated very well. Oh, this little girl's back. Let's talk to her. She does not like us. Trying to sneak up on me. Nope. All right. Uh, let's go back around. What's this boat for? Belly of the boat shines like it was recently painted. Nice. We're gonna go back down and around. I, I wanna. I wanna take a look. Oh, I can zoom out pretty far actually. Okay, cool. Who's this? Hello, sir. Step right in. The store is open. A young girl with chubby red cheeks waves at you, smiling. Her nose is also red from the cold. <laughs> I am the law. <laughs> Hello. Interested in a new and exciting book? She stomps her feet to feel warmer. What kind of store is this, anyways? It's a bookstore, sir. We sell books, postcards, and some board games. It's called Crime, Romance, and Biographies of Famous People. Okay. Whoa, 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 hold your horses, little girl. This is the encyclopedia in my head talking to me. So I failed. No matter what, it says failed. Challenging 12 versus your total 8. Uh, what is a book? What is a postcard? Uh, I know all these things. What's a board game? Board games are like <laughs> little games on a table, made to pass the time. There are several different ones, but sailors here mostly buy cards. What's a postcard? A postcard is a small cardboard picture. You can write a few words on the other side and send it to your friend or beloved. Oh, nice. Thank you for the description. Empathy. She is unfazed by your question. She would consider it impolite to point out any perceived weirdness. My pleasure. Anything else you'd like to All right, hey, we got some experience from that. Is it okay if I ask you some questions? Hey, I'll try to answer any questions you have. I hope they're about books. What is your name? 
My name is Annette, sir. My mom, her name is Plicence. She owns the place. She's inside, mining the register, organizing the stock. The girl gazes at the window, then suddenly jolts, her eyes wide as if recalling something. Feel free to step in and browse our wares. Okay, I guess I will. Okay, bye. Let's, uh, let's go take a look at what's going on inside. I don't really have any money for this, but that's all right. Hello, lady. Welcome to Crime, Romance, and Biographies of Famous People. My name is Plaisance. Plaisance. She, the clerk extends a greeting. And please take responsibility for the energy you bring into this space. Oh, all right. Inland Empire. A golden pendant hangs around the woman's neck in the shape of what looks like tiny fish heads trapped in amber. Uh, before we go on, you seem to be well off enough. Can you give me some money? I feel like there won't be an opportune moment to ask later. <laughs> a curious pendant you're wearing. She clutches the pendant and narrows her eyes as well. So are you the owner of this store? I am. The proudest owner of our little shop of culture. Her voice is high-pitched as if to give it more penetration. She has fine-tuned her voice to find the most welcoming approach for attracting new customers. It doesn't work. Your daughter's the one standing outside, yeah? Annette? Yes, my daughter. I hope she wasn't slacking off again with her nose in science fiction. Tell me, was she at her post doing her job like a proper girl? Yes, of course. Wonderful. Did you talk to her? Yes. Great. On a scale of 1 to 10, how compelled were you to buy books after talking with her? 10. Oh, her opinion of her daughter depends on how well she lured you into the store. Very polite and helpful. Oh, come on. We gotta give her a 10. My precious, her dedication brings joy to my heart. She immensely satisfied with the answer. If you have children, I hope they turn out as great as my Annette. <laughs> the way you're handling her strikes me as wrong. Annette is quite the trooper. She's great value add. I'm here to dismantle the free market and abolish child labor. Um, as a young girl should be. With the proper attitude, she'll have a bright financial future. Okay, we're changing the subject. What if I buy a book? Uh, then why are you talking to me? Everything on the shelf is to browse. Don't you feel compelled to buy anything? She fiddles with her pendant, then waves her bony fingers directly at you. See those shelves? Go be drawn. All right. All right. Um, I mean, I can't afford any books, so... A mountain of board games. Small mountain of colorful board game boxes. There are numerous types of games for all ages. A lot of shelf space seems to be taken up by... Storekeeper, what board games do you have here? Wonderful board game, sir. The Viticulturist is a classic for sure. Or perhaps you'd like the Archipelagos of Insulinde. A very educational game for those interested in geography. Rua, rau, fuck. It's an account competition, but can get quite intense after a while. We have games for the whole family you can play with your children. Do I have friends? Look at the lieutenant. <laughs> oh, shit. I just damaged my morale. It certainly feels like whatever you are will die with you. Look at me. Who'd want to have children with me? I don't feel as if I have kids. Yes, kids, friends, chicks. I have all of those. Then you're a lucky man, officer. Children are the greatest of treasures. Oh, I can't buy the game. Um, What's in the front window? Gifts, books, and molten candy. We're just going to take a... We're just going to take a gander. That's all. Old sports magazines tucked away in a dark corner. We can go up here, too. The book collect, uh, collects the national recipes of Arda. They are all about lake trout. Run, 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 run. Oh, there's a... Oh, I saw a dark curtain. It's a tome of fascist magic. Rather candid. A quaint picture book brochure. Very colorful. What do we have here? Shelf of biographies. The plaque on the shelf reads biographies of famous people. You see a large variety of names, none of which ring a bell. Storekeep, anything of note in this shelf? I would say, the woman hums to herself, the greatest innocence. Yes, most certainly it is an important educational tool, delving into the depths of history, religion, and their relation to innocent power. Innocent? What? That's not innocent. I fucking said that wrong. <laughs> Who or what is an innocence? 
a very influential historical figure, but I'm sure, surely I don't have to tell you about that, as if casting aside this thought. You're a law officer, and law officers have at least some education. Well, so you recommend it? Certainly, it's prudent for a person to have at least elementary understanding of history and society. Imagine the chaos we'd be in otherwise. Can I even pay for it? Nope. Suddenly, a particularly odd title catches it your eye. It reads, High Speed Love, the tragic true love story of Jacob Rrr and Alfie Delatraz uh, by one Cecilia Arverbrook. High Speed Love chronicles the romance between two of the finest tip-top tourney racers in history. One of them is madcap driver Jacob Ur. His blonde mane graces the cover. Next is Ur's life story, and you see a slim biography of an occidental rock star named The Anti-Star. His fa he's famous for shooting morphine into one of his eyeballs and cocaine into the other. Next to that, Revacololian radio personality Guillaume Bevy stands in front of a rundown drug den. He's a permanent fixture on Channel 8, reporting on life crimes and ruining cops' days. It, I really must insist you buy one of the books. You're interrupted by the shopkeep. Reading them is not for free. Do still browse, though, but not too long. She understands she has er er erred, against, erred against the customer and immediately corrects course. Man, reading is tough. Okay. Well, what do we got? Map wall. We're not gonna look at maps, unfortunately. This is a video, and I, you know, we still gotta, we still gotta kind of of progress the story here. So we're gonna see what's behind this curtain. She's gonna yell at us. Close curtains. You see a tattered curtains blocking the window of another room. A strange cage-like trinket dangles from the curtains. Excuse me, officer. The back room is strictly for employees only. Shopkeeper, what is behind? What's what's the cage like? You see some kind of charm, an irregular polyhedron, assembled from bones, sticks, and straw. Inside, a disturbing fish head with empty eye sockets stares at you. Aside from poking it suspiciously, there is nothing to else to do with the fish head charm at this time. The curtain remains shut before you. Shopkeeper, what's behind the curtains? Nothing! Now please go back to browsing books. Do you feel compelled to look at books? The books are all you care about. The more she tries to draw you away from the curtains, the more alluring they become. I'm gonna fucking fuck her. You're just about to pull open the curtains. The petrified voice of the shop owner cries out once more. Sir, don't touch that. I told you it's off limits to customers. Her hand closed around her pendant, her fingers nervously playing with the talisman. Para, psychologically speaking, we're done if you decide to open them. I won't be held responsible for the consequences. It's too dangerous. She looks away, mumbling. Why is everyone always messing with the curtains? Why can't they just buy books like normal people? Ma'am, this is different. I'm a police officer. I need to get in there. Why? It's not like anyone was killed there. Well, that's a weird thing to say. She stops abruptly as her hand flies over her mouth, baffled by her own bluntness. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to be so impolite. Just don't go in there. I can't allow that. You'll only make things worse and unleash the powers. Excuse me, but I sense this place is calling for me. I must have... Wait, I don't care. You can't stop me. I will open them. No, she raises her hand to try to stop you. Please, just talk to me, officer. Come here and let's talk this through before you decide to do anything extreme. None of this makes me want to not open this curtain. Lies. Rip them open, we say. There is something mysterious about the curtains. Be careful. Close curtains. Tat oh, come on, guys. Yeah, we're doing it. You see a dimly lit room full of dusty furniture and trash. A doorway stands in the back, covered in dozens of scary little cage-like trinkets. Your shadow looming over it like an omen. I warned you, you are unleashing, unleashing forces beyond your understanding. Excuse me? Oh, what the fuck? Ghostly silhouettes of hair dryers. No sane person would ever put their head in such a machine. Uh, I probably would. A, a vaguely androgynous portrait of a man. Merely looking at that unmanly haircut threatens your masculinity. Warded door. A heavy door with a missing handle st stands before you, covered in dozens, if not hundreds, of little oddly shaped trinkets and charms. It appears to be locked. What if you just break it down? Um, I can break down the door. Maybe I should break it down, but not before I strategize. Let's, let's just knock, right? Only an echo. No one is there. Maybe I... Sh let's let's strategize. That's right. Take in your surroundings. You need to have a solid ground and a proper posture if you want to succeed. First, check your posture. 
steady breathing, solid core. You've got this. With one shoulder forward, you are ready to smash into the door like a battering ram. We will check our surroundings. The room is dimly lit and littered with old barbershop rubbish, but the path to the door is clear. And what about the door? It's made of solid block of wood, but it has stood there for ages and the hinges are old and coated with carmine layer of rust. It should be doable. All right, guys, here we go. What? Oh, Jesus! Whoa! Oh, no! Oh, God. So let's check that. Okay, try to breathe normally. This really wasn't the best idea. I deserve it. This my body needs to suffer for being this weak and disappointed. Is that bad? Is that blood I'm seeing? Rub your forehead. Please don't cry. Please don't cry. Slap your face. I don't want to see anyone to see me cry. Are you all right? The lieutenant steps closer. His eyes soft and worried. This looked pretty intense and painful. I must admit. What is going on there? An upset, high-pitched voice calls out from the bookstore. Are you really trying to break down the back door? I warn you, don't tempt the spirits, officer. You can hear her take fright and steps backwards. Don't tempt the, st the spirits or you'll damage the holy wards on the door. Uh, well, I can't break it down. I want her to open it. I'm going to make her open that damn door. I'm a cop. Ma'am. Not to mess around back there. What are you even trying to accomplish, you fool? I thought that was obvious. I tried to smash through the door using pure physical force. <laughs> Hello again, esteemed officer. And well All right. Um, let's go ask her daughter. Let's see if her daughter knows anything. Okay, something's up. That door, something's up. We need to know more. Shouldn't you be at school? I do my studies at home at the moment. I have to help my mom keep this place running. Isn't going to school more important than this? Mom says it's necessary to do both, but it builds character. Mom says a proper worker is dutiful, and that's how you get ahead in life. You, su you, you succeed. How's the business going? Mom says it's peachy. He was a little afraid at first, but there's talk about this house being cursed. Behind her, the window seems boarded up. You sense the boards creaking, twisting for a second, and some kind of doubt in her tense shoulders. Cursed in what way? Cursed in a way that makes them say that no business has ever really thrived here, sir. That they all go... She's looking for the right word. Ass up. I wouldn't really say it like that, but I guess so. It sounds rather serious. I should probably go look into this. We can go into the bookstore and ask about the case, but I don't see much more to look into here. Yes, sir. Please do go look at our wares inside. The postcard, blah, blah, blah. How does this curse manifest itself? It does not manifest itself in any way. It does not exist. I liked it better when we were talking about whether it's appropriate to stand out in the freezing weather. But Kim, the plasmic manifestations. Uh, the girl looks back and forth between you two. Anything else you wanted to talk about? Enough about the curse for now. Okay, we now know. We know about the curse. And and Kim is playing coy, all right? Kim doesn't want any part of the curse, but we're going to make him. It's important to know what's going on with this curse. Hello again, esteemed officer. Cursed? Who said that, Annette? I will have a word with her. This place is not cursed. It has a robustly magnetic energy. She doesn't. She, it doesn't feel like it's thriving. feels ghostly. Hmm. All right. We're not going to get to see ghosts this time. I think we messed up. No more no more ghost chit-chat for right now. We'll find out. I'm going to get to the bottom of this. Don't worry. What's this say? All right. What is this? The electronic doorbell. A, an old call box with matrix of buttons. Main hall. Oh man, there's so many places. Nothing happens after you ring the doorbell. They don't want to talk to you. An off key melody starts playing after you ring the doorbell. Oh, it's playing. Uh, Kuno, please stop calling here. Grown ups don't have time for your stupid games. 
<laughs> Pisces, it's me. Please, open the door. I'm trying to get in. Oh, I'm sorry, officer. I thought you were... But the doorbell is broken and the bookstore shouldn't even be on the list anymore, so I can't help you. Please don't call here again. Damn it! No answer. Just seeing the words Andro Orlando gets your hackles up. Its very existence is a threat to your masculinity to say nothing of your hair. Artemiteps boxing. No. 24 hour window? Nothing. Emma's fashion altier. Or no one. Fabron's taxi. Nope. Slipstream SCA. Is anyone there? Yes, hello. This is Ten Centennial Electrics. This is a woman's voice, crackling and fragile through the static. Uh, I thought I was calling Slipstream SCA. My God. The Lieutenant Exchange. Change look at you. Sorry? It's you. My God. I didn't think I would hear your voice again. Oh, okay. It's a woman and she knows you. Your heart beats faster. No, something's wrong here. Are you sure she's talking to you? Uh, do we know each other? Michelle, just please. She stops and you can hear her breath heavily. Or breathe heavily. Her breath distorted by ancient static. It sounds like a ghost. Wind blows through your clothes and you feel detached from your surroundings. Inside building, cold memory saying. Why did you even call? I don't understand. You've been gone for months. I thought you didn't care. Of course I care. It's just that I've been going through some tough time. Ever since I came to work here, it's been different. As if my mind's been wiped clean. A spot of static overrides her words. When she speaks again, it sounds like she's submerged. It's so nice. It's so nice to be able to finally forget. Forget about what? She sounds like she's about to cry. The cold is deep under your skin, as if you were talking to someone who's a hundred years away. Somewhere inside the building, water is flooding the cellar floor. Hello? She doesn't answer. You said it was nice. What's so nice about forgetting? Silence. The only thing you hear is now is static and waves washing ashore upon the bay. I get it. You don't want to talk to me. No one ever wants to talk to me. Another seagull passes by. It's getting cold standing here, staring at the silent box. Fuck. <laughs> All right, it's a goodbye then. It must have been some kind of faulty wiring. We should maybe stop playing with the doorbell. It looks ancient. Okay, that was weird. Fortress accident, SCA. No one. We're, I'm just going to do all this. Oh, look at Ice City. No one. No one. Empty card. The button looks new, but someone had removed the name card. Nothing happens when you try to ring it. Okay. Listen, we did our best. Guys, we did our best. I, we're trying to learn about this mysterious, creepy building. And this little asshole, I swear to you, kid, if you do not stop throwing rocks... Oh, 